listening and communications. Could you spend a few minutes to go through some of these ideas on mm-hmm. listening? Tell us what it is. Tell us what it's not. And and to that uh, listener, we're going to do that. We're going to yeah. give you just a few minutes here to talk about this Art form. It's a nice opportunity for us because usually we get people that say we don't communicate. We don't communicate. And they well. communicate. Sure. They communicate just fine. They just don't like what they hear. And and, and I want to point out to you that listening and hearing is not, not the same thing. Okay. Ooh, uh-uh. Listening and hearing is not the same thing. No. When when we talk about listening, we're using that term to identify the that you are connecting to the emotions of the person that is speaking oh, to you. Mm-hmm. Okay? Whereas hearing is about Light conversation. I hear the I hear the horns honk. I hear the overhead page. I hear you tell me that the kids have an activity after school. It's not an emotional connection. No, it's, it's just information. It's just how do we trade information? Mm-hmm. And and one of the things that you have to understand, and people do not understand this, is that listening is a learned skill. Yeah. You do not you do not learn to listen on your own by yourself. You learn to hear. The work mm-hmm. world is all about hearing, collecting facts and figures. Reciting back to you what what I've been directed to do. And for that, you're at a disadvantage because listening is something that takes practice. So let's, I want to talk a little bit about what listening is not. I got one more thing I want to discuss real quick before we get too much into this. And that is, why is it are people such poor listeners? And, And I think for the most part, we're poor listeners because we're not taught to to connect to the emotions of the people that are talking to us on a daily basis. We're bombarded with acquaintances, with neighbors, Mm -hmm. with people in the supermarket, people that are trying to sell us things. And, and we're just always trying to get it down to what are you trying to tell me? Give me the facts. Just, just tell me what you need. Just tell me what you want me to know. Yes, that's it. Tell me what you want. It's like we go to school. We, 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 we're in college. We learn that I just want to know what it needs for me to pass the test. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're typically not connecting to any emotional messages because our world is not filled with emotional messages. Mm-hmm. Our, our world is filled with instructional messages. Okay. Right. So now that I've said that, Carrie's going to pick up with that little bit. I didn't yeah. mean to cut you off on well, that one. Well, you know, part of this idea that what happens to us every day is that we're hearing, but we call it listening. And so there are, I have a few things here that listening is not. Listening is not giving advice or recommendations. Boy, that's a tough one. I get people all the time in my clinic. They look at me and they say, Doc, please just give me advice. And you know what? As a paid professional mm-hmm. therapist, I am not, I don't give advice. I don't give advice either. Uh, I help you brainstorm. Right. Uh, I I'll will, discuss options. I'll make some, I'll give yeah. you some ideas for how you might do that. And good therapists do that, by the way. They don't solve <laughs> your problems for you. They say, you can look here, you can look here. What do you think? What might work for you? But they, you make the decision. It's not mine to make. And you know, what's interesting is uh, part of, Part of being licensed in the field, you've got to do thousands of hours of work with couples and individuals. And when I was doing my internship, one of the one of the professionals in this field said, "You know, uh, hey Gordy, if you really want to make a lot of money in this business, you just got to be right. You got to be uh, successful with fifty percent of your clients. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. If you're successful with fifty percent of your clients, you're considered off the chart and a successful therapist. But think about that. Fifty percent. Well, if I'm giving advice and I'm telling you how to Act your Do life, you have how the lottery numbers yourself. for the weekend? I'd like that for I advice. Fifty percent of you are going to hate me. And, I mean, <laughs> right. if I'm right all the time, I'm, I might <laughs> luck out, but you know better, right? Oh uh, yeah. Um, so the thing I want to point out: we don't give advice. No. Nope. Something else we don't do: we don't give you judgmental responses. Meaning that I've done the A plus B equals C. I don't mm-hmm. do deductive reasoning. I don't do the analytical logic of of telling you what this should what you should feel or believe. Right. And that comes through as sarcasm. I mean, when you look at somebody and say, where did you come up with that? Yeah, that's true. You know, we, I didn't, I, it's judgmental, even though I didn't say, you know, that is the biggest crack I've ever heard of in my life. The response comes across the same. Where did you come up with that? So one of the other things we don't do, we, we give advice. We don't give judgmental responses. We don't solve your problems. You don't mm-hmm. go to a, you don't listen uh, to someone for the purpose of collecting information to solve their problems. No. And then finally you don't. Oh, th- this one's, I see this one happens all the time. We hear, we, we hear somebody, they're talking to us and we're just listening to collect that piece of information. I need to tell you why I'm right and you're wrong. And once I have that, I'm done listening to you. I'm just waiting for you to stop talking, take a breath, 
pass out maybe i don't know but i'm done listening i'm just waiting for me to have my turn to jump in there and tell you what i think about it so now. i'm gonna give you two more that i don't think listening is and the first of the two is you don't show sympathy you know you don't show sympathy and then finally you don't pretend to listen you know, once because i do so many classes i have learned uh to, mm-hmm. to watch the like eyes this, uh, of the people that are pretending to be listening mm-hmm. and, and their eyes and become over. almost myopic as they tend to just stare off and they're not listening. They're just, they're daydreaming. And mm-hmm. I'm sure you've done it. If you ever had somebody talk to you and it's a long winded conversation and your mind's about fishing in the Gulf of Mexico and reeling up fish and they say to you, and don't you agree? And you, you flash back because if you do it well, you'll always remember the last five or six words that right. they said and repeat them back mm-hmm. so that they always get the impressions that they're listening to you. But let me tell you what active listening is in a nutshell. Here we go with a few of them. Number one is the focus on active listening is to understand the other person's experience. Yeah. You know what I mean by that? I do, but I think you'll explain it better than I'll explain <laughs> it. <laughs> if, 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 you're, if you're catching what the person is saying to you, you're going to either reflect back some words so that mm-hmm. they clarify or ask some type of question so that you know that, you know, I've got it right. Mm-hmm. And so we call it reflective listening. So you're going to, you're going to focus on well, how understanding. Is that different? So explain to me how that's different than pretending to listen. Cause I think some people would say I'm focused on understanding, but they're really only pretending to listen. I find it impossible to, to be reflective and pretend. Well, I can give you the last few words that you said. No, no. Reflective listening means that I'm giving back to you the words that you said in such a way that I show that I've got it. Mm-hmm. And Whereas, do you get that? That's why I'm bringing this up because the people that sit in my groups will, I'll say, did you hear what I just said? And they'll give me back the last sentence that I said, but, but they have no understanding. Thought, sure. Right. And um, so there is a big difference between I can regurgitate what you, I just heard you say, yeah, regurgitate, like when you memorize like a, a fruit reptile. test. And when, you, when you're really focused on getting to the context, the, the meaning that the person has with what they're telling you. So, so when you're listening, you're also going to stay to one topic. You don't allow Absolutely. people to, we call that tangential. You go from topic to topic to topic. One thing at a time. And, and then finally, the last part of active listening is, is that it's the process of getting you to talk about what's going on in your life. Mm-hmm. And during that process, you've you got to remind yourself, I'm not evaluating. I'm not giving judgment. I'm not giving advice. I'm not giving counsel. Mm-hmm. I'm just here to let you know I understand. Okay? Mm-hmm. So when we talk about this thing called active listening, I'm going to remind you one of these things we've said several times, and that is understanding is mandatory. Agreeing is optional. Now, what do you think that means, Carrie? Understanding is mandatory. Agreeing is optional. Um, understanding is mandatory means that I really have to work to understand the feelings about the situation or the topic that you're sure. telling me about. I'm going to explore about. that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask sort of what we call it detective questioning. Mm-hmm. Detective questioning is about, well, when that happened, did you expect it to happen? How mm-hmm. did you first feel about it? Did you talk about somebody, talk to someone about it? Detective questioning mm-hmm. is a way of of sort of broadening your horizon to understand what's going on in this particular sure. discussion, okay? You know, another way to look at that is I try to, I really attempt to put myself in your situation. I attempt to step into your shoes and from your viewpoint, look at it, look at it the way you're looking at it. And I get so many guys that will tell me, Doc, if you understood the facts and you understand what happened, you couldn't possibly agree with this person. I didn't and, say you had to agree. And yet I would... Oh, I didn't say that either, Carrie. I, mean, I know. Help me. I'm confused. What? Well, because understanding is mandatory, but we haven't even, we didn't, n- neither one of us will ever say you have to agree with them. We say you have to understand them. Okay. So it's the emotional I think message. I'm a little ahead of you. Right? Sorry. Mm-hmm. A little bit of the most message. And then finally, you were going to go on to about how do, I, how do I validate somebody's emotions? How do I show them that I care when I'm listening? Um, how do you validate somebody's emotion? Well, you've got to acknowledge their experience. We've already talked about some of the ways that you show you're listening. You, you're not critical. You don't evaluate. You're really um, looking to understand their feelings about what's going on with them. Okay. You're going to accept their experience for what they tell you that it is. So, so when you validate what someone's feeling, you, you're making a decision that you're going to try to put yourself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. You're going to try to see it from their point of view. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to focus on on whether you agree or not. So, right. so it, it requires you to have a different mindset. I know I have a good one here. And one of our questions actually talks about this this week. And it's this, this idea that um, he's always yelling at me. I hear that a lot from the women about how we go to talk about something and he's yelling. And I'll, 
I'll say, I'll tell him to stop yelling and he'll say, but I'm not yelling. And then I actually did a couple of men's groups this last week and I asked them about it. I said, how many of you, how many of you have been accused of yelling by your partner when you're trying to have a discussion? And I'll tell you, do I raise my hand? 10 of 11 hands went up in the room sure. and I looked at them and I said, well, how do you think that's possible? Do you guys think you're yelling? And you know, 10 heads shake. No, I don't think I'm yelling. Um, but it has to do with understanding the perception. So if, if their partner, if their wife or their girlfriend is saying, you are yelling at me, Mm -hmm. your job is to say, okay, the perception by you is that I am yelling at you. Is that what I want you to, is that the perception I want you to have? I'm just a loud person. You don't, I just got a big voice. And I hear you. Is that the perception that you're trying to give to your partner? No, it's not. Okay. So now that we have that answer. What are we going to do about this misperception? I run into this all the time where I have to ask the person to, can you bring it down a notch? Mm -hmm, mm Because you may be a loud person, but my ears are ringing and I can't (laughs) handle it. And that's what has to happen in relationships. She may have to, she will tell him, "Um, you're yelling at me. And he will say, no, I'm not. And he has to learn to say, she just said I'm yelling at her. And so what do I have to do to stop yelling? I'm going to give you this one. Can you hear the bell? 